Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a logarithmic expression. We have the natural log of 3 plus 2 root 2 divided by the natural log of 3 minus 2 root 2. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this expression using properties of logarithms. I'm going to go ahead and uh, walk you through the solution and then show you the property that I used for this problem as well as prove that property. Okay. So first of all, let's note that 3 plus 2 root 2 multiplied by 3 minus 2 root 2 equals 9 minus 8, which is equal to 1, from difference of two squares. Quick reminder, the difference of two squares is when you multiply a plus b and a minus b, you get a squared minus b squared. Great. So what does this tell us? This tells us a very important property that one of these, say 3 plus 2 root 2, can be written as the reciprocal of the other. So we can basically write the 3 plus 2 root 2 as by division 1 over 3 plus or minus 2 root 2. Now when you cross multiply, you'll get 1, so it checks out. Okay, now how is this helpful? First of all, let's rewrite our expression. We have ln 3 plus 2 root 2 divided by ln 3 minus 2 root 2. Now, since 3 plus 2 root 2 can be written as 1 over something, that brings us to the negative exponents. So we can go ahead and write 1 over 3 minus 2 root 2 as 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power negative 1. Awesome. That makes sense, right? So whenever you have something like 1 over x, you can write it as x to the power negative 1. Great. So let's go ahead and plug this in here. So let's replace 3 plus 2 root 2 with 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power negative 1. And then divide it by ln 3 minus 2 root 2. Now notice that the arguments for both of these log functions is the same, except the top one has an exponent. But by the log rule of exponents, we can go ahead and move this exponent to the front, right? We can go ahead and bring it to the front as a coefficient. So this becomes negative 1 times ln 3 minus 2 root 2 divided by ln 3 minus 2 root 2. But ln 3 minus 2 root 2 and ln 3 minus 2 root 2 are the same thing. So they cancel out. And obviously, they're not 0 because ln 1 is 0 and these numbers are not 1. So the answer would be negative 1 in the simplest form. So that's what the answer is. Let's go ahead and look at some of the properties that we used. For example, we used a property that looks like this. If you have ln a to the power x, then you can write it as x times ln a. Make sense? Okay. And in particular, if you have negative 1 instead of x, like if x is equal to negative 1, then you can basically write ln a to the power negative 1 as, or ln 1 over a as, negative ln a. So these two are opposites. Okay? Now let's go ahead and prove the first property. Second one is just a special case. So how can we prove that ln a to the power x is equal to x times ln a. We're going to use substitution here. Let's go ahead and use substitution. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, set ln a equal to something first. I'll start with that. So let's go ahead and set ln a equal to z. ln a equals z. Now what does this imply? By definition of logs, this is base e. This implies a equals e to the power z. Make sense? Okay, great. And let's go also go ahead and set this equal to another variable like ln a to the power x, I want to set it equal to y. Okay, great. Now let's see what happens. We have, we have a equals e to the power z, right? And from here, by using the definition of logs again, we get e to the power y equals a to the power x. Okay, now we have two equations. The first one is a equals e to the z. The second one is e to the y equals a to the x. That kind of looks complicated, but don't worry about it. Here's what we need to do. We are trying to find an expression for 
you know why so let's go ahead and use the first one here let's replace a with e to the power z okay so this becomes e to the power y equals e to the power z to the power x and then from here we get e to the y equals e to the power zx which means y equals zx but we were looking for y this expression right here so now we got the answer but what is z what is x z is ln a so we can write this as ln a times x or x times ln a but remember what y was y was ln a to the x therefore we just proved that ln a to the x is the same as x times ln a and that is the property we used for this problem and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.